Hello and welcome to Core Finance. I am Matt Brown. This is the CEO slot and I'm joined today by Enrico Cesani, who is CEO and founder of Menomar Strategic Holdings, who have IPO today, so listed on the London stock market. How are you today, Enrico? Very good, thank you. Well, I can imagine a very busy day, so thank you very much for, for joining us. It's a pleasure. Now, floated on the market, can you just talk us through what your company does, where you operate, and how you make your money, basically? Uh, sure. As the name says, Myanmar Strategic Holdings is a, a company operating in Myanmar. Uh, is operating in consumer sectors such as hospitality uh, and education, um, with the vision of creating a company that gives exposure to investors to uh, the growth of the Myanmar market, mm -hmm. uh, but also more specifically to the growth in disposable income <coughs> and discretionary spending. Uh, in terms of the sector we cover, we started with hospitality uh, and we have four boutique hostels across Bagan, Mandalay and Inle Lake, which are three out of the four main uh, destinations in Myanmar. And then we operate schools under Brian Wall Street English, which is a franchise from Pearson, where we have a school in Yangon and we open a second one in November. Um, we make money from uh, management fees uh, mm -hmm. from the hotels and the schools. So effectively we operate and manage all these businesses. Um, successfully. Fantastic. And so the hospitality is, is as you say, hotels and, and this is a minimal, is, is a destination now for the travellers. It certainly uh, open, has opened up uh, over the years. So do you see a growth now in, in the hospitality business? Uh, correct. When we started in 2000, uh, well, the, the market in 2011 had about 1 million tourists uh, and last year at 4.7 million tourists. So there has been like an exponential growth as the country gets more connected uh, across Southeast Asia uh, by a plane and on the border countries such as China or Thailand uh, by bus. Um, in general, the country had a shortage uh, of hotels. Mm -hmm. So effectively, there is an opportunity to build uh, the hotel offering uh, across uh, the different price points. Um, the large brands have already come in, so you get uh, Marriott, Kempinski, Sheraton, Shangri-La, uh, but there is a great opportunity to cover the lower uh, end of the market. Mm -hmm. uh, so the kind of people who would come in with uh, um, uh, Ryanair, you know, with the likes of Jetstar, Tiger Airways, and so on. Uh, so we, our product is effectively boutique hostels. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a contemporary setting um, where people share rooms, but also private rooms. Uh, and where you have like a very busy uh, F&B uh, concept downstairs where people spend time knowing each other, doing activities and so on. Fantastic. And then you mentioned the educational side. Um, so just talk us through and, and the type you have with, uh, is it Wall Street Education? Uh, Wall Street English, correct. English, sorry. Uh, our Wall Street English uh, uh, concept is uh, a company that was started in 1972, uh, actually in Italy, mm -hmm. uh, and is currently owned by uh, Pearson in the UK. Um, it is focusing on English language uh, for adults only um, and it uses a blended learning methodology whereby you have uh, certain activities that you do on a computer, on your phone, uh, but also uh, certain activities that you do in class or with a teacher, what they call you know, teacher encounters. Um, the reason why we decided to build up the education uh, offering was to really build up the um, uh, soft infrastructure uh, of the country. Mm -hmm. People are focused so much on the hard one, but there's also like a big soft infrastructure that needs to be built uh, with people learning how to communicate to the rest of the world. There are a lot of technical skills, but they're still missing the uh, skills to communicate with the rest of the world. Um, it is, a, I guess, a retail product in a way, uh, similar to, to a gym where people uh, subscribe for a certain period of time, and during that period they can consume as much uh, education as they want. So floated on the London Stock Exchange. Um, obviously that brings in capital to the company, mm -hmm. one of the benefits of floating. So first off, why London? Um, I guess there is a, a, a Burma connection maybe with London that some viewers will remember um, the country being called Burma. Um, and also, what do you expect to do with all this capital? Um, well, in terms of why the connection to London, uh, I guess the UK and European investors have been very committed to uh, Myanmar uh, over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, and a good portion of my investors are either from the UK or uh, European. Uh, furthermore, I would say that in the future there is an opportunity to build a strong institutional base uh, starting from the UK because most of the frontier funds are still based uh, in the uh, UK. In terms of the use of funds, we're really looking to grow our hospitality and education uh, platform. 
um, and we have a, a fourth hotel opening in Bagan uh, in October with the second school opening here and going in November and we are looking to expand further both platforms. Uh, we appointed CEOs, uh, one for hospitality called Daphne Yuan who comes from uh, uh, Thailand, she used to work for TCC, a uh, big conglomerate managing one and a half billion of uh, real estate portfolio for uh, the TCC. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we hired Mark Nussom to be the CEO for uh, Wall Street English Myanmar. Uh, before Mark used to be the CEO for Wall Street English Thailand. So we have a fairly uh, experienced uh, set of professionals uh, who are really there to help us grow uh, these two uh, sectors across Myanmar. And uh, you talk about experienced professionals and uh, above the people managing the separate parts of the business, the board as well. Um, there's a lot of experience on the board. Can you just briefly talk us through the, the experience of the board? Correct. We, we felt it was, uh, we felt the listing brings, uh, I guess, some liquidity uh, and definitely transparency. So it was very important for us to have uh, uh, a board, uh, you know, with, with two non executives uh, who have been living in Asia for uh, a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, the board is chaired by Richard Greer. Uh, we lived for uh, almost 18 years in Japan uh, working for Bearings um, and then came back to the UK working for Commerce Bank. Uh, and Christopher Clark, who is a lawyer, uh, worked in Hong Kong and China for almost 30 years. Um, the other executive on the board, together with myself, is a, a person called Dennis Yeo. Uh, Dennis used to be the head of finance for Heineken, uh, who did in Myanmar. Uh, so he has a lot of experience in Myanmar and he's based there. So Enrico, a question for you. How does your business impact the local economy? Um, we are, I guess, very connected with the local economy and the local uh, ecosystem. Um, a case study, for example, is in Bagan, where we opened our first uh, hotel. Uh, we calculated that uh, our business brings over a million dollars uh, to the village in services where we don't get involved. Uh, so these are services that the locals sell directly to uh, our guests, such as bicycle, rental, um, restaurants, uh, small gifts, and so on. Um, we feel that it's very important for us to uh, be a strong uh, supporter uh, all this ecosystem because that's the reason why uh, we're going to be uh, invited uh, to come and build more hotels uh, across Myanmar. And um, finally, over the next 12 months, well, how do you expect um, Myanmar strategic holdings to expand and, and grow? Uh, well, I guess from a macro perspective, we are uh, blessed by the fact that Myanmar keeps on growing um, and there is a strong push you know, from China and from ASEAN to keep on growing. So we. Uh, will be lifted in a way by the general macro environment around us. In terms of the way we plan to grow is um, focus on the sectors where we build strong foundation, uh, so hospitality and education, uh, but also start looking at opportunities to uh, grow our business exponentially, uh, so potential acquisition within these two sectors or outside of these sectors. And uh, for investors, the stock ticker is? Uh, Shwe, S-H-W-E. So check that out. Uh, Enrico, thank you very much for joining us today. Enrico is the CEO of Minimar Strategic Holdings. Thank you very much. Thank you.